Okay, so the E3 conferences were a while ago now. Um, I had to wait on some B-roll footage, and also I couldn't get any for one of the other things that I wanted to do footage of, but yeah, we'll go into that another time. <laughs> no, we won't. But yeah, that's why there's been the delay. So yeah, the Sony's E3 conference. Now you'll note that they have a few exclusives of their own, but unlike Xbox, they haven't said whether they will be doing PC releases as well, or whether it's just, you know, purely a PlayStation exclusive, because, you know, Xbox were good enough to say, it's exclusive to Xbox, but also there will be PC releases, and, you know, Xbox in the past have waited, like, two years before doing some of the indie games, like, um, Little Big Planet and, um, D4, and some of them maybe didn't do so well because of the fact that they were purely exclusive, and then when they came out, they didn't get as bigger fanfare on the PC, so, you know, D4 got abandoned, even though it would have been really good and was picked up really well by PC gamers, it's just that it was hidden away on the Xbox in the marketplace and not really advertised that well and, you know, kind of hidden, because it's not in the stores, it didn't have a storefront presence, but, you know, a lot of these PlayStation exclusives won't have that problem. Now, comparing again the consoles, there was the PlayStation 4 Pro and, you know, you know that that's just a step up on the PlayStation 4. It's not an entirely new console. But then there's the Xbox one where you're kind of confused at the whole situation because it's like there's the Xbox, there's the Xbox 360, there's the Xbox One, and there's the Xbox One S, which is the small Xbox One. And then there's the Xbox One X, which, you know, was originally Project Scorpio. And then people are going, oh, it's a brand new console. And it's like, no, it's probably the equivalent of the PlayStation 4 Pro. It's sorts of the same console but done better so you know the playstation 4 pro it's got all the buzzwords which is um the high dynamic range of the graphics and you know it's doing everything in 4k true 4k and it's like you know at least they're not as dumb as some camcorder processors and webcam companies seems to be because you know shopping for webcams and that it's like 1080p but in 30 fps so you mean 1080i because you know interpolated is 30 frames per second interpolated and not actually 60 frames per second. P means, you know, it's precise. It means that is true 60 FPS. You know, it's capturing all the photo frames. So you can't then say it's 1080p at 30 FPS because you actually mean it's 1080i. <laughs> it's like, no, you know, you know you're consuming. You're just going to put people off. But at least PlayStation are avoiding the confusion. And, you know, because it's the Xbox 4 Pro, you know, you've already got an Xbox. Xbox. Damn it! Why did you know, my brain doesn't work properly anymore? PlayStation 4 Pro. So if you've already got PlayStation 4, it's your choice whether you want to spend the additional money for doing it a bit better, or you can wait for a PlayStation 5 when that eventually comes out. Because you know, two years maybe it might be before there'll be a PlayStation 5, and it's your choice. It's a good way of bumping up the sales because you know there are people that will want the latest and truly the best and the best features. But if you've already got a PlayStation 4 and you've got a small screen, you know, if you're not in 4K graphics or, you know, the ultra high definition ranges that they're going for, then you don't really need to upgrade. But, you know, if you want everything to be smooth and fantastic and you have all the biggest PCs and all the screens and all the biggest stuff, then yeah, you can go for that. And, you know, it's quite a smart way of doing it. At least there's no confusion. But again, back to the exclusives. It, you know, it'd be nice if they mentioned if there's a PC release planned. You know, even if it's a couple of years down the line, even if it's, you know, one year exclusivity and then it comes on PC and not on Xbox at all. That would be nice to know as a PC gamer. Because there are some of the exclusives that I like the look of. And, you know, um, other reviewers have kind of been hard on them. And I'm like, what the hell? You know, these were games that I was pretty excited for. So... If it'll open up. Detroit Become Human, Peggy 18, uh, was at E3 and that looked pretty good to me. And, you know, not only on the PlayStation thing, right, my video is running slow as hell. So, you know, the sync might be a bit bad. But yeah, Detroit has been the home of AI in a number of different things like Robocop and also, <laughs> you know, there's other things. But it's about the birth of. AI, oh my god, running at 4K on a screen that is not suitable for it is not ideal. It's really stuttering. 
but yeah i mean you follow the story of essentially an ai companion that that it's like the slave race <laughs> in this instance it's like benefit seekers and job seekers you know they're considered less than human but in this case it's artificial intelligence but then there's this one person that's on his quest to become human you know he's got more intelligence and more feeling and you know a soul essentially and he's spreading that to the other ai but the thing that i liked in particular is the aspect that sort of brings it to life so it's going to be an open world sort of game but with crossed with a story like life is strange so you know there are choices that affect the world so imagine fable where your choices sort of affect the world but you know you've got very limited choices depending on your good and bad but this one there's going to be quite a few different choices that you can make whether you choose to be good or whether you choose to attack the drone or whether you choose to run whether you choose to attack the cops you know it's all going to have consequences on the game that will affect the world at large and how the other ai affects and you know what sort of leader you are in the game and i think that it's going to be quite a good game you know if you consider it like fable on a grand scale but with a lot more consequences and a lot more choices so you get to make your choices live in like a slowdown event rather than like pick button a pick button d and i think it's going to be pretty good and you know it'll go down pretty well even if it's not that critically welcomed by <laughs> certain other people i think it's going to be pretty good and fun to play for me in my opinion so obviously that's probably going to be a choice as well do you want to break in and release the ai in the shop or do you choose not to and you know whether you went to the cops you might not have the opportunity to free these ai companions and then pass on sentience essentially to bring them to life rather than just being programmed drones so yeah i think it's going to be a pretty fun game and you know with brexit and you know the political climate of standing up against the rich and the government but sort of underlying in society at the moment it's going to have quite a lot of comparisons to real life so yeah whether you go around tagging and claiming areas for the ai you know it might be a bit controversial but as a ps4 exclusive it's looking pretty good and i hope that it comes to a pc release because it would be a pretty fun game to play but you know it's whether you have the money to go get a ps4 and the game and all of this but if you've got a ps4 then it's definitely a seller for the console but you know if you've paid a lot of money for your pc then you'd hope that you'd get a pc release on top and you know the playstation would still make their money and they'd have an exclusive exclusivity in the console wars but are they gonna then compete with pc gamers because yeah and like i said you ramp it your actions impact the world around you and how you know you might have different events and different gameplay elements that you can't get unless you've done certain triggers in the past so it could truly affect the game but without actually playing it it's hard to see just how wide influencing those impacts are but you know in 2017 with all of the power that the console has i would imagine that's it would be a lot more wide-reaching than other impact decision-based games like Fable have been in the past where, you know, there's been very few and very small impacts. I can imagine this would have a much grander scale of impacts. And I'd look forward to seeing more about it because it looks pretty good. Do you choose to take the gun? And then there's different game modes, the sandbox storyline, revenge, you know, it's like um person of interest I guess <laughs> in that sort of screen where it's like all the decision trees of where does the AI go? Where do you go? What do you choose? How do you choose to live as an AI?
And I've picked a top three, and the uh, next one that we're going to go into, if <laughs> this video runs a bit smoother, hopefully, is Days Gone. Again, people are being quite down on it, just because it's a zombie game, and, you know, it's sort of a bit like... Not the way we live now, how I live now. <laughs> what is the name of it? I can't remember. It's got a sequel to that as well, but I think Days Gone could be sort of competing against it with its own sort of thing, but it seems pretty good as well. But again, you know, people are like, oh, why has it got zombies? But, you know, it's like a post-apocalyptic world. Zombies are quite a common thing. Don't just rag on it just because it's got zombies in it. It looks pretty good, and I think the zombies add to it as an aspect. So again, you're leaving your one camp here. And I have to wonder whether the bike, as he gets ambushed, I mean, if you know that the ambush is coming, can you slow down and avoid the ambush, or is it scripted? You know, can you get off your bike and maybe avoid it? Can you sort of slide under it in a cool manoeuvre on your bike? Because that'd be pretty cool if you know it's coming. Could you shoot them in advance, you know, if you can see them? Because you can move on the bike and shoot them, but it might be pre-scripted here to... I mean, you know that there's the wolves that'll chase you down, and, you know, do you stop and shoot all the wolves there rather than outrun them? Do you... I don't know, shoot them in advance if you know they're there? Do you just not pay attention to the wolves so that you can pay attention to the road ahead? Because again, he looks back and looks at the wolves and then gets taken out and, you know, it's a deliberate scripted distraction. But many questions as to how open world this will be, you know, how wide ranging your decisions will be. Again, quick time events <laughs> seems to be a common thing lately. But it's not the end of the world, it's just, you know, I guess it adds to the gameplay mechanics, but I'd rather have some other aspects than quick time events. You know, quick times and cutscenes aren't the most fantastic, but I guess they want to add incorporated playability into it. So again, once your bike's knackered, you know, it's prevented you doing that and then you're going on elsewhere, but if you knew the ambush, you could go and explore your friend's bike being ambushed without even having to lose your bike. And, you know, maybe you can go down the trail on your bike. And Questions that are not answered in a trailer like this, in a small gameplay. But this is where they introduce the zombies and you find out about the zombies in the world. But, again, I don't think it's a detriment to the game to have zombies in it. Because, you know, something had to end the world and why not zombies? gives you something as a mindless mob to go into. You know, you could have had creatures of any sort. They could still have all sorts of zombified creatures and who knows what. No, I don't think it removes elements from it at all. I think it adds to it. So, people that are being harsh on it for having zombies, you know. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. I mean, The Last of Us, that was the name of it. You know, that was a zombie game, and this looks like it has a bit more to it than The Last of Us. And there's The Last of Us 2, which admittedly looks like it might be interesting, but, you know, it's a similar game, and this has a lot more bandits and camps and all sorts, rather than just hiding in stealth. I guess it's got a choice of, you know, how wide-reaching do you want to be, is, whereas the the last one she had to be quite stealthy in some instances because of the way some of the zombies were. You know, the ones that hunted you down based on the sounds so you had to be quiet and sneak around them and it was for stealth, whereas this seems like you've got choices, like placing this bear trap here. Do you choose to place the bear trap and force someone to go into it to sneak past them or do you actually just go in all guns blazing and blast through? Because there are people that will just want to be able to blast through and the game allows for that, whereas, you know, people don't always want to be stealthy, but it gives you the choice and the options to be stealthy and sneak around and make your own way through. And again, like Detroit Human, I don't know if that has as big consequences it I, I assume in this it's not going to have wide reaching consequences as to how stealthy you are to be honest but that leaves it quite fun <coughs> and you have to also compare Far Cry is it going to be like open world like Far Cry where you just stumble across 
missions and stumble across things and stumble your way through the quest but you can also go off and sandbox your way through it or is it fairly linear with a sort of open world sandbox because you can see all these zombies and all this other stuff going on but again it's leading you through to this camp in a fairly linear way but it makes it look open world you know rather than being closed off and again you got to see do you go guns blazing to save your companion with an entire army standing between you i mean maybe you could just snipe the guy from down below and not have to deal with any of the f upcoming aspects or do you do what they show in the trailer which is blast the gate and allow all the zombies to run in and then get up there in the confusion because that's quite a smart way of doing it as well Either way, it looks a fun little game and, you know, as an exclusive I'm sure it'll be a big draw. But whether The Last of Us 2 is an exclusive as well is another matter. I don't know if it was. I think it was exclusive to PlayStation 2 as well. And, you know, if it is an exclusive then they've got both of these strong zombie games <laughs> on the title why I laughed there is because I thought, ZOMBIE YOU! Yeah, that was a terrible... Terrible title, and that's now on Steam, so you know it came out as Zombie rather than Zombie U, and you know that was kind of a Wii U exclusive, but not a draw because it wasn't that good. Whereas this looks a lot better, and you know, there's plots and scenes like this that aren't that interactive, but you don't have to have them constantly interactive. It's nice to be able to put the controller down and enjoy the story from time to time. And then there's the big bear, which maybe wouldn't have come if you didn't blow up the gates. So again, you know, all these aspects as to how wide ranging are your consequences. Zombified bear just goes to show that there are zombified creatures. So yeah, that was days gone and I think it could be pretty good. I'm pretty fun. And then the last of my three titles that the top three picks from the E3 is um, the insane trilogy from Crash Bandicoot, which again, you know, I'd like it to be maybe on PC as well. And if it does come out on PC as well, that'd be a pretty good deal because not only would it be a remake of the original game, so it's got the improved graphics, and you can also play as Coco, and it's the first three games with the mini games. And that's going to be pretty good. And if they put it on the PC as well, then not only is it going to be the PlayStation players, and, you know, I had it on the PS1 originally, but, you know, I lost all the stuff. And, yeah, sad times, so obviously I can't play it now. It would be nice to have a PC version that I could get my hands on, and, you know, people who have wanted to play it who are on the PC, if it comes out on the PC as well, then they would pick it up as well. They'd make a lot of sales, and not only that, I would assume if it does sell really well, they would start working on a sequel, you know, a brand new Crash Bandicoot game, and that would be pretty good to look forward to. And, yeah, I hope that they do go to that and make brand new levels and a whole brand new game. And, you know, I was talking to my ex about this, and she said that she'd like not only the new game, but also if it incorporated online multiplayer, that'd be pretty good, you know. So maybe the levels are designed so you can play them co-op online as well, like two players. So not only mini games like The Driving and, you know, all the other mini games that they released, not only in the game, but also on separate things like Crash Team Racing, which again, you know, might be pretty good if they made a racing game, but also they could incorporate mini games in the new release you know so there's like the hog riding levels and all that but make mini game multiplayer versions that could go pretty well with the new release and you know i think if they did have the online aspect of multiplayer for the proper levels as well in a new title that would be pretty good and you know maybe you could make some sort of co-op only levels just don't make a ai companion that's really terrible and gets itself killed <laughs> i hate that in games but yeah, I mean, it's like the AI charges into this zombie with a chainsaw and then it's like game over and it's like Resident Evil 4, Shiva, please. <laughs> no. And it's like, you know, I'm perfectly fine but the AI companion decides to charge it in. But yeah, it'd be cool to have Crash Bandicoot with 
a lot of new stuff, new levels, new multiplayer games. I think that would go pretty well, go down fantastic. So I hope that the end stage trilogy does sell really well and then they come out with all the new stuff and a new game. Because if they don't, then they'd be missing out on shit, you know. It's nice to cash in on a remake of the originals that, where they had to recode the whole engine from scratch and then, you know, they decided to add stuff. So it's not just, like, let's say, proper the rapper HD, which is not really an upgrade. They've actually put modern graphics in the modern engine and, you know, made it a proper HD remake and they've done it well. So it looks pretty good to me in the fact that you can play as any of the characters. So and they have their own idle animations and their own sorts of cool little things so yeah I look forward to the zaniness of it and I hope that they do make a sequel because that would be amazing <laughs> but I, most of all I hope that they come out with a PC release because if they don't then they would be missing out because not only would it be a HD re-release of the trilogy for the PlayStation but also a PC release for the first time to be able to get Crash Bandicoot, so to get all three of them for the first time on the PC, so many people would be up for it, they would make so many sales and it would be the best, so I do hope that it's not purely PS4 exclusive, it does come out on the PC as well. You know, even if we've got to wait a little while for it, you know, six months a year, it'd be worth the wait just to get the hands on the title and be able to play that. But yeah, I mean, the lineup for the PlayStation 4 exclusives all looked pretty sharp and pretty good to me and you know I didn't see anything that looked horrible <laughs> you know they all look pretty good games so I think all in all the draw for the PlayStation 4 E3 conference they won it the best and you know compared to Xbox and then you compare it to the other conferences like Bethesda and a few other things Bethesda was all weird but a lot of their titles not so brilliant you know a lot of it's already out like you know far the shelter fallout shelter and all that and it's like well you know you just sort of bring it out on console eventually and yeah so the playstation exclusives were looking pretty sharp and then there's life is strange and all the other stuff which i've done in separate videos but these are my top three as the exclusives as they stand and i hope that Crash Bandicoot isn't the exclusive as it says, but you know, I couldn't get B roll for it, so unfortunately, I can't really show you that. They didn't seem to have it on the PlayStation site, so maybe that's a good sign that it might not be truly exclusive. It might actually be going to a PC release because if it's not going to be on the Sony site for B roll, then maybe, just maybe, it might be coming out on PC sooner than you think. And here's hoping. And, you know, then there's the whole limited release thing where they do limited boxed versions for PC games. And you get things like cups and models and t-shirts and, you know, whatever they want to make it for a PC release as a limited edition. If they do that, and, you know, if I find out about that in my inbox, I'll be sure to let you know because that would be pretty cool to see as well. Obviously, I haven't really been publishing all of the limited box releases I've been informed about, but, you know, there's only so much you can do. And I've been catching up on mental health issues and stuff. But, yeah, that was the 73 conference. So, if you want to scan some more, goodbye.